In a flagrant breach of local and international law, pirate fishing trawlers are stripping West African seas of vital marine resources. In the second of two special reports from Sierra Leone, Juliana Rufus tracks down one of the illegal vessels and asks why this unlawful trade has been allowed to flourish for so long. Arriving in Sierra Leone, we caught on camera two South Korean ships fishing illegally in the Fish Rich Inshore Exclusion Zone, or IEZ, an area reserved by law for local fishermen. The IEZ is covered. It's covered with a blue net. So we can't read the name? You can't read the name. But even with the markings covered, we spotted a vital clue, Sea Queen. Despite the presence of Victor Carbo, a fisheries ministry official, the vessels refused to stop, so instead we took pictures of the crew as evidence. The next day we heard disturbing allegations about corrupt members of the Navy colluding with illegal trawlers. Every day they can't hold them. In Freetown we wanted to present our evidence to Sierra Leone's Ministry of Fisheries. But with the government minister abroad, we were refused an audience. We decided to try and identify the trawlers on our own. We learned about the vessel monitoring system, which all trawlers legally need to have installed. With the VMS, we can get the history for all these vessels. And we sent images of the trawlers to international experts to get assistance with their identification. The investigation into the true identity of the Sea Queen continues. Over the past few days, our mailbox has filled with photos sent by fishery experts from around the world. Finally, one comes in that appears to match one of the trawlers we filmed. I call Victor from the fisheries ministry, who agrees to meet. Come here, I need to show you something. Look at this. I have pictures that were sent to us. So these are the ones, um, these are our ones, right? Okay. Look at this. Ta -da. This is a picture that we got. Mm -hmm. This is taken in Las Palmas earlier this year, Ocean okay. 3. Yeah. And um, the people who sent me this have looked at both of them, and they're really sure that our trawler is the Ocean 3. It appears we finally have a positive identification. The Sea Queen is the Ocean 3. The only thing I don't get, why didn't that show on the VMS? All ships fishing in Sierra Leone are required to carry a vessel monitoring system, or VMS, so that they can be traced by the Ministry of Fisheries. I don't think it has got a VMS transponder on it. It hasn't got a VMS on board? No. Without a VMS, the only way to track the Ocean 3 is by contacting the government observer on board, whose task it is to make sure that foreign trawlers comply with Sierra Leonean law. But this needs to be done the official way, and the director of fisheries still doesn't want to meet us in the absence of the minister. To find out what other chances we may have, we contact an observer with a track record of working on South Korean vessels. He says observers operate within a deeply corrupt system, fueled by the fact that they are paid by local agents who represent the foreign fishing companies. So explain to me, how does it work? Who's paying you? I'm paid directly from the vessel owner. When, it, when they come in for licensing, they give the money to the agent. It's two hundred dollar per month. We are not paid by the ministry. We are paid by the vessel owner. The money goes by controlling the observer's salaries via the agent, the fishing companies buy themselves the freedom to fish illegally wherever they want, and this includes inside the protected inshore exclusion zone, or IEZ. Korea vessels. The normal position of fishing is the IEZ because that is the area where they get the catch they want the species they want, so they are always there. So what happens if you're an observer and you realize the ship is fishing in the IEZ mm. and you want to contact the ministry and make that known? Mm. If you're trying to do so, what happens? My God, 
when I get this, He explains that when he was new to the job, he once reported a vessel for fishing illegally in the inshore exclusion zone, with disastrous consequences. I was removed from that vessel immediately because what was the language they used on me for security reason? And nothing comes out of it, no fine. So are you saying there's connivance between exactly. in the fishing ministry and the agent? Exactly. Why does the ministry support the agent? The ministry should do it's what's best for the country. It's just a deal between the ministry and the agent. There's corruption? Yeah. Very corrupt. Very, very corrupt. Just as we are wondering whether this is why it has been so hard to get a meeting at the fisheries ministry, we receive a call. Minister Kabia is back and he wants to see us. Thank you. Hello, Minister. He has called all his top officials into the meeting. You think you witnessed the crime? We think we witnessed yeah. a crime. Um, we saw a ship, a trawler, um, that we believe was fishing in the coastal exclusion zone, which would be a criminal act, but even if that isn't, um, the markings were obscured. The minister is keen to watch our footage. Everybody ready? So this is the first trawler that we spotted. We actually film how it pulls the net out of water, so there's no doubt that there was fishing activity taking place. There you can see the markings are obscured. And in fact, if you don't mind me stopping it, because that's one, what you can see here, it's, it's very hard to see, but it says Sea Queen. Yeah, I see Queen. Uh -huh. I see Sea Queen, you're right. Yeah. But whatever is before here, it's hard to see, but definitely some. Sea Queen, huh? Mm -hmm. I explain how we identify the Sea Queen as the Ocean Three. But the Ocean Three, is one of the ships that still hasn't got a VMS fitted, which is why we had the problem tracking it in the first place. The minister agrees it is crucial to stop the Ocean 3 from escaping from Sierra Leonean waters. There are ways of tracking them down, and we'll use everything in our means to, to do so. But Mr. Bangora, the director of fisheries, still questions our conclusions. We need to have the evidence that uh, Sea Queen, you know, is synonymous with the uh, ocean also. Ocean, ocean three. Yes. yes, we cannot go there, you know, to confront the observer. If anything, we have to bring them in, and we can only bring them in, you know, at their expense. You know, when we have something very strong that we are sure of pushing further. We have international experts from the fisheries sector who are 100% positive that yes. the photos match. It's also possible that there is uh, this uh, justification on this uh, name change. What you're saying is there is forensic evidence yeah. that they're one and the same. In the end, the minister overrules the director. What, what we're trying to say, director, is we have to move quickly, locate the ocean free or whatever it calls itself and determine whether they were there or they were not there. Victor suggests a strategy that avoids arousing suspicion. What we need to do now is call this boat support for failing to install the VMAs. Then we, we re-snap again. They are here now, so they can actually build up this case. They can um, look at the boat again, take the photos, compare the sequin inscriptions. Certainly, we can do that. You guys can continue out. Okay, I'm done. I've got to work Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Minister, thank you very much for your time. You. And hopefully this will be helpful. And suddenly everyone is kicking into action. On the minister's orders, Victor types a letter calling the Ocean 3 into Freetown Port. Reluctantly, Director Bangora adds his signature. Victor makes it official. And Mr. Brown, the fisheries ministry's messenger, gets a ride in our car to deliver by hand the letter to the agent and the Navy in return for a signature upon receipt.
The following day brings us the news we've been hoping for. On orders from the Ministry, the Ocean 3 has arrived into Freetown Port for the installation of a vessel monitoring system. We've been told to come to JMC headquarters for the boarding of the Ocean 3, which is now clearly visible over there in Freetown Port. We arrived here a little ahead of time early and just saw a military boat go out to the Ocean 3. We're trying to figure out now what is going on. After our meeting with the minister, we were led to believe that the Navy would be facilitating Victor's inspection. But having watched them board the Ocean 3 without us and following the allegations we've heard about Navy corruption, we're now worried they are tipping off the trawler to allow her to escape. The Ocean 3's agents and sub-agents have arrived and they're eyeing us suspiciously. Hey. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Yes, sir. How are you? Hi. How this day? All so good. what's going on? We've just been watching the boat to see what's happening. Okay. And then Mr. Taylor, the ministry's naval coordinator, joins us with alarming news. Good how afternoon, you, Mr. Yes, Taylor. How is everything? Desperate. Yeah, so the yeah. Navy are saying they never received the letter? Well, the commander said he did not receive any letter. So I said this letter was delivered with a way book yesterday. So let's them cross check. But up till now, they could not get to me. As a result, the Navy is refusing to give Victor and us transport to the Ocean 3. We decide to call the minister. The reason, the reason. OK, sir. OK, I'll do that now, sir. Off. Yeah, we don't have over one hour, sir. They wait. Yeah, we don't have over one hour. Yeah, OK, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. With the minister reaffirming his support, Victor bypasses the Navy and organises our own transport. It is our moment of truth, where we will find out if the Ocean 3 is really the trawler we saw fishing illegally a week before. But as we approach the Ocean 3, the letter C Queen, which we spotted engraved on its side, are nowhere to be seen. I'm so nervous it's not the Sea Queen. Why? Because then we're wrong. If it's not the Sea Queen, we've got everything wrong. Okay, slow, 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 slow. And then we see it. You got it. You see the sign Sea Queen. And that's exactly what we saw at the sea. That's the sea. Wow. <laughs> we really found it. At least it's a clue. <laughs> no, it's giving us a lead. No, we've got a lead. <laughs> and this time, they can't stop Victor from boarding. This is the observer on board. Hello. How yes, are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm Juliana from Al Jazeera. What's your name? I'm Mr. Bangura. Yeah. For now, it's all smiles and the captain appears Hi, unconcerned. I'm Juliana from Al Jazeera. What is your name? Kim. Kim. Mr. Kim. Nice to meet you. Captain. Cool list and license of the boat. The passports of this of the crew. When Victor gets down to business, the captain appears uncomfortable with a local official asserting his authority. Next, Victor wants to compare the faces of the crew members to the images we filmed. Number 20, give me a passport. Yeah, say Yeah, I think we have two good leads, right? And then they can give us the others, right? Um, can we see these photos? When presented with the images from the previous week, okay. it's the crew's turn to realize that this is not just a routine inspection. Defending passport. Can you identify yourself? You. Eh? You. Come this way. Find his main passport. And then Victor searches for a face we all remember. Hey! The one in the black shirt. Engineer! Everyone, no, you. Everyone. You come. Don't go nowhere, eh? Stay. 
Those who have been identified are shepherded into the cabin. and you are laughing at us. Yeah, you saw us on that day. I was waving and then you are busy laughing. Where is it? We are engineer. Is that you? No, you? <laughs> come, come, look, look. Can you switch on the um, PC? Incredibly, the Korean engineer still denies it's him in the photo. Okay, you know same same. <laughs> same same. Same same? No same same. Uh, no same same. Um, engineer, Aki, you, this man, you same same? Same same, no same same. Okay. You are black. Me, problem no. Same same, no same same. Same same. Okay. Mm? okay. You same same. Yeah. Okay. The, um, the other photos. He accepted them. Uh, the same him. Person. Yeah, yeah, Victor has him. managed to identify four of the vessel's crew. We now we are smile. certain that we've got the right ship. Between a courageous Sierra Leonean official from a Ministry of Fisheries and us, the crew of Al Jazeera, we've actually managed to track down and arrest this illegal trawler. <laughs> Inside, Victor is concluding his calculation of the observer's yes. daily catch report. We're going to the arch and then verify the catch. We've got 5,510 cartoons to be on board from the 21st of September to the 20th of October. We go in search for the captain who we need to open the hatch so, for us. We need to get the attention of the captain immediately. <laughs> if the catch hasn't yet been transshipped, it will be of substantial value. Now, we, we say, yeah, we're captain. And if it was caught in violation of the law, it could be confiscated. No wonder the captain has disappeared. Wait, captain. Oh, don't call captain. Captain, don't go Be careful. This thing is here. We are going down the hatch. Hey. Hey, Marsh. Hey, OK, come. Come. This is the area where the fish is cleaned and processed. Unperturbed by our presence, crew members are using it as a bathroom. And then um, this is the entrance to the arch, right? And look, well, we, we can start looking at the boxes out here, the empty boxes. Excuse me, sir. The numbers on the boxes prove that Dae Yoon, the South Korean owner of the ship, obtained a license for export to the European Union. But with what we've found out so far, the trawler is likely to get blacklisted by the European authorities. Let me get the attention of the captain, eh? The captain is still nowhere to be found. Having his authority so blatantly ignored, Victor finally loses his cause. I don't, now you say, I don't say. I don't say, let me go down there and I steal it on. So, more called captain, say, no, this is captain. They're open and open for you. I don't call you over there. The captain knows his job. We, we need people to open the hatch, right? We need people to open the hatch so that you can see. So I'm calling on Mr. Taylor, the director, telling them about the situation that the people are not supporting us. They're not cooperating. They're not cooperating with the investigation. But where's the Navy? We've been waiting for the Navy for so long Until now. now they have not uh, showed up. Without the captain, we seem to have come to a grinding halt. This is just because we are civilians. And had they seen military people around, they are afraid because they might use a minimum force, and we are not allowed to use minimum force. It could be a lot of problems for you now, because you're caught in the middle between the Sierra Leone law and the captain. That's why I'm trying to talk to captain to assist. Refusing orders or instructions from the fishing boat officer, right? They are committing another offence. Let him know the that. The sub-agent has realised the seriousness of the situation, and he manages to convince the observer to open the hatch for us. Soon we will know if the catch is still on board. I think we have to do some jumping. But be careful, the place is cold. There's no ladder? No, there is no ladder. Deep in the belly of the ship, Victor begins his inspection. This is actually really disconcerting. We still don't have any law enforcement with us, and we're down here. It's freezing in this storeroom, and they could just close the hatch on us. This actually means for export. This is 
almost full. This is about 70% full, meaning they have not got shipped yet. Right. So within a week, they will not be able to catch this amount of fish. According to Victor, the value of the catch amounts to several hundred thousand US dollars. Do you think you're at all able to determine afterwards how much of this fish was caught illegally? Illegally in what mm -hmm. sense? Illegally because actually they, they have got a license. Yeah, they've right. got a license, but yeah. they've been fishing inside the eyes. Yes, yeah. and then they have been covering their names, meaning the whole catch is illegal. In the processing plant above, we hear some shouting. The captain has finally reappeared and he's furious. Hey, captain, captain. Victor wants the captain back on the bridge. You remember the 22nd of um, October? You, you see speedboat. Will you possibly give us the position at that time? But the captain's memory has suddenly gone hazy. You not remember. I keep possible stay. You go to track, oh, right? Now, if you reverse this, this is the show outside come out. This line, you can go back. It is the show all high worker. This there? Mm hmm So, Aki, 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 you what? Small time. OK. He has deleted all the trail. He has deleted, he has deleted everything. No, no, no papers, no stay. You, before, before all Mark is stay. Now, all you, Santa Maria. Having tried to cover his tracks, the captain continues to deny fishing illegally until Victor lands his killer blow. The GPS photograph showing the trawler's position inside the exclusion zone. We outside, you inside. Mirando, land. This land. Mirando, a Kiwi position. We outside, you inside. In the face of such overwhelming evidence, the captain finally realizes he's lost. Hmm? We oui, outside. Aki, you inside. This we outside. No, no, no. Ship inside. Yes, in the inside. Yeah, I and as if for the grand finale, suddenly even the navy joins us. I've been ordered by my seal to come with two personnel, place them on board for as a security until further notice. Sub Lieutenant Van Gora no longer denies that the navy received the letter asking to help us board the Ocean Three. Instead, he has a new explanation for us. They gave us this letter, but having gone through the letter, we are clear to that this is not justifiable enough to place security on board. So as a result, they went and prepared another one. The letter that was signed yesterday by the Finnish Fisheries Minister wasn't enough for the Navy to come and provide security for the official. Because, you know, I mean, we climbed down the hatch and inspected everything, and um, something could have happened to us. They could have just closed the lid on us. No, because there was no security. Nothing will happen, nothing will happen. How do you know you were Sierra not there? we are friendly. Sierra Leone and water, nothing will happen. Well, from what I have seen over the last 10 days, a lot of things happen in Sierra Leonean waters that shouldn't be happening here. Four hours after we first boarded, we finally leave the Ocean 3. And this time we do get Navy transport. The following morning brings encouraging news. The Ministry of Fisheries is fining the Ocean 3 90,000 US dollars and the catch will be banned from export to Europe. In a country where most illegal trawlers get off scot-free, this is a real success. We drive to the JMC Operations Center to say goodbye to Victor. What's next then? This is a one-off situation and things are still going out there at sea. I think that's the next thing. We need to actually stand up as a nation and say, no, let's put an end to illegal fishing activities. Yes, and let people start benefiting. Let the people of Sierra Leone benefit from the resource they have. While our investigation has been successful, it's a modest victory. Now it's up to the Fisheries Ministry and the Navy to enforce the country's laws so that Sierra Leone's coastal communities will have a fairer future.